Hey there, Slavis here, bringing you another episode of Penumbra Overture. Now, we are in the middle of... Well, we're still doing the, in the intro area. Um, but we're here, we're going to attempt to go to the office first. Which is that way. And I'm going to be sneaky, because being sneaky is good. Let's just sprint like crazy. Office. Okay. Ooh. All right, this is a nice well-lit area. I like this typewriter. We'll just lock the door with that. So much history in this place, tied up in words and left to decompose. I think we're safe. Let's see. Nothing. Door number two. Something. What is it? Beef jerky. Good. Door number three. Also nothing. Uh, so many files. Beef jerky. I wonder if that's the healing item in this game. Painkillers. Well, I'd prefer a first aid kit, but at least if I'm injured, I can grin and bear it. Can I drop that? Uh. Okay. Doesn't like that. Oh! Did not think that would work. Big book of explosives. Chapter 1.3 Black Match Fuse. <clears throat> the Black Match Fuse is one of the oldest, simplest, and most reliable fuses in modern pyrotechnics. It is easy to create, essentially consisting of just string and gunpowder. But we warned. Warned. Chemicals concerned will stain clothing. <laughs> And as always, do concern is advised. Materials required string, black gunpowder, and backstring. String should be coated with a thin layer of backstring, which acts as an adhesive. The string is then carefully rolled in the gunpowder, left to dry at least a couple of minutes before use. What's that black match for you? It's dynamite, invented by Alfred Noble in 1866. Dynamite is commonly used in construction, mining, and demolition has proved far safer to handle than alternatives such as pure nitroglycerin, provided, that is, it has been properly stored. Over time, the explosive component of dynamite, supposedly made safe by the presence of the dia diatom diatomaceous earth, has a tendency to weep, making an old box of the explosives liable to detonate on contact. Armstrong's mixture. Armstrong's mixture is included in this book as more of a point of interest than a viable chemical mix. The formula exists as somewhat of a legend in modern pyrotechnics, referenced by those knowledgeable enough to stay away from it as death mix. Hey kid, want to buy some death mix? Its incredible volatility made it, makes it unsuitable for almost all potential applications. Materials required. Red phosphorus. Barium. This mixture can be carefully and slowly mixed to minimize risk to the chemist. Sulfur can substitute for or some or all of the barium to slightly increase sensitivity. Interesting. Okay, that was a long notebook. Backstrin. Used to make black uh, black match fuse. Black fuse match. Black fuse something. A man, an old man, clutching something unseen. He is strange, and yet he is no stranger. Never seen before, still I know this man before me is Howard. I call him father. 
Or what the hell? What just happened? I don't know if that was such a good idea. Copenhagen Post, Monday, 17th August, 1930. Psychotropic deposits at the bottom of Death Mine? Researchers at the University of Copenhagen have suggested that mind-altering chemicals naturally sewn into the rock may be the cause of high suicide rates at a Greenland mine. The university, which has recently been con conducting studies into isolated communities, first became interested in the workers of the Northwestern Lead Mine last year. They discovered that even taking into account Greenland's natural, naturally high suicide rate, local figures for the last 100 years were abnormally high, at 46 deaths per 100,000 populace, compared to the national average of 29. On further investigation, experts diagnosed in many stages in many of the miners symptoms in common with the earlier stages of paranoid schizophrenia. This has been prompted. This has prompted researchers to hypothesize that natural deposits of lysergic acid, a pH 4 formula recently discovered to have hallucinogenic properties, may be present in the rocks. Few locals were conducive to interview, but those who agreed to speak had their own explanations. Inuit spirits, known as the Turingate, live in the mountains. The university is awaiting results of chemical test studies continue. Batteries. Okay. I think that's everything in here. Yeah. Okay. Onward. gets within more than a few feet of my hiding spot and I better not stare it out. Anything within my field of vision might panic me and then, oh, panic, right, like amnesia. some kind of wolf thing. Take the next left. Torture. Okay.
Okay, good. Looks like spider. Spider equal sad. Yeah, I feel the same way, buddy. Oh, that's sunny. Ooh, steam equals dead or gas. Box minus box full of rocks minus rocks equals a ladder. Good. That's what I understand. Oh. Oh, yeah. That's exactly what that means. Box of rocks minus rocks. Rocks equals a ladder. Ooh, okay. Pain killers. was different but the same that time. Like I had more control, but over what? Over what indeed? I wonder why there's a space there. No. The latter part was removed. Okay. Well, let's. I don't like this at all. As if this basement caved in some years ago. Something's tunneled through here more more recently, though. Christ, what sort of creature makes these markings? Marking? What markings? I didn't see any markings. No, not spiders. Erg, spiders in small places. I don't know if I can go through with this. I think I hear a pitter patter of tiny feet. Kidding me. Which way do I go? We'll check left. Put 
this back. Good. At least I'll have a way back this, this, uh, way back up here. Perfect. I didn't even have to position that. Okay, so the left path was good. Okay, middle or right? Side. Luckily, it's mummified, or the smell would have been awful. Well, okay, here's something. Day one. Begin this record in still in hope that the great work we have undertaken here might one day be of scientific value despite the chaos which has ensued in the six hours previous. My aim is to remain secure in what I in what help there may be arrives. Until what help there may be arrives. And to that end I have barricaded myself into a small workshop area in the abandoned part of the mine. I hope that the meager food rations here rations here will keep me alive and that those I hide from will not jeopardize that. Perhaps this mine really is cursed. It's almost precisely 30 years now, 30 years since the incident that, that brought us here. And now, 30 years on, fate has struck again. D3. I forecasted that today the rescue crews would arrive, but I can only hypothesize that they would be unaware of my location and hence busy themselves evacuating the other survivors. If they have not arrived by tomorrow, I will go out in search of them. My first was mistake was to make assumptions on the matter of rescue. My second mistake was to make assumptions on the safety of this mine. My third mistake was to act on both of those assumptions and going outside of my safe haven. My best estimate is that I left the workshop where I was secured about two days ago in search of aid and I have found only danger. I approached the old living quarters but curiously could find no sign of life whatsoever. I returned in what I thought was the direction from which I had come, but soon found myself in an unfamiliar locale. Confused but focused, I attempted to make my way home, but I found myself threatened by some species of feral creature, which seems to have made the old mine its home. Although the specimen bore significant interest to me, I chose to retreat, only to find myself outmaneuvered and outnumbered by the beasts. I turned and ran injuring my ankle in the process, which I believe now is most likely a sprain rather than a fracture. For some time I cowered and fled into the dark, but a few hours ago I discovered a door leading to a smaller, disused part of the mine, the key for which I still have in my pocket. Within that area I discovered this storeroom, and I think it should keep me safe for some time. This place is a maze. My lesson learned, I will not venture out again until I am certain the area is safe. Day 19, so that's 13 days after that. Rescue seems increasingly unrealistic. Supplies diminishing. Lots of spiders in this place. I do not like spiders. Ooh. I caught one of the accursed eight-legged beasts nestling in my open mouth when I woke up this morning. In my surprise, I swallowed it. It's not so much the act of swallowing which concerns me, but the genus of arachnid. It would be unlikely that a cave-dwelling spider would be venomous at any significant degree, but the possibility troubles me all the same. Any known venom would have affected me by now, and so today is the first minor cause for celebration I have had since the incident. But, luck but lucky coincidence, by lucky coincidence, this revelation also means I have discovered a virtually inexhaustible supply of nutrition. I intend to venture to the basement beneath the storeroom, in the name of science, to discover more about these creatures' natural habitat. Four days now I have been surviving solely off the quite considerable sustenance provided by the spiders. For some time I was struggling to gather enough of the crunchy little morsels, however, Lady Luck smiled on me once more when the batteries in my torch died and I made a second life-saving find. The creature's natural habitat is the dark. With my light now diminished, I need only lie still for a few minutes and I will have attracted enough of the beasts, beasts for a rather health hearty meal. Ooh. Dry dusty old bags. Okay. They do not like light, it seems like. Okay, good. 
it weren't for the size of the piece of that, I would say that this looks like eggshells. Oh. My earlier assumptions on the benign nature of my cellmates may have been made in error. After a careful autopsy, I'm concerned that there may be a small volume of natural chemicals stored in the stomach which, if ingested regularly over a period of time, may become psychotropic or even lethal. My only real chance is to break out of here and raid any stashes of supplies I can find. However, the evidence against such a move is insurmountable. One, I have no source of light. Two, I swore to myself I wouldn't leave until I heard human voices outside. Three, the spiders are so tasty. From the marks I've been making on the walls and my scribbled diary entries, which in the dark may amount to an illegible scrawl, today is the hundredth day of my new life. Over the past month, my edible friends have become more and more aggressive and has swelled in number and size. Whether or not this is a result of my plundering their ecosystem, I am unsure. However, at this rate of growth, it will soon be too large to crawl through the big gaps in the walls. For all I know, I could only be seeing the tip of the iceberg. If all fails and I am never recovered, I hope at least that my study of, and indeed involvement with, these fascinating creatures will one day be regarded as an important point in natural history. The greatest names in modern science got, th got there more through fluke and talent, and it appears that the rule has extended itself to my discovery of this delicious new species. I only pray that the second rule deems my breakthrough too, too insignificant, for all great discoveries tend to consume their inventors. Ooh. Got eaten, probably. stick doesn't wear out. The battery does. I can use the glow stick all I want. I believe. Oh, cool. Perfect. I think that stopped the steam. So, I guess it's back into that tunnel. But I am going to end this episode here for now. Um... I still have no idea what's going on, but we did find some dog-looking thing, and we hear some spiders. Well, we hear what I assume are spiders. So, thank you for watching, and I hope you join me in the next episode. Alright, see ya.